Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Britain Jake Go the Movies, episode 16. And this is going to be a very fun episode. So, because uh, we're going to do our first hilariosity uh, review. And we're going to talk about uh, a, a cinematic masterpiece. And I'm talking about The Fanatic, starring the man himself, John Travolta. This is Britain Jake Go the Movies. Uh, he's Britain. I'm I'm Britain and he's Jacob. <laughs> yes, just to not just to make it less confusing uh, for people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's get into this uh, puppy. Oh boy, I you know I was I was like I I can't really think up of a movie to think about that to really talk about this week, but after some putting some thought into it, I thought you know what we haven't done a hilariosity just yet. So why don't we start right now? And it was either this or Veronica. And then I decided, you know what? I don't know if I really want to do Veronica because that's a whole other beast entirely. So um, I guess we're doing the fanatic. Oh boy. Uh, God. Uh, we see John Travolta in a movie playing a person with autism. Now, I am someone who has autism himself. So this was a very interesting movie to sit through um, as someone who has that ailment. And, um, oh man, <laughs> what can I say about this movie? Uh, this film is utterly ridiculous. And I say that in the best way possible. Um, it's directed by Fred Durst of Limp Biscuit fame. Uh, this is a band I'm not particularly fond of. But uh, he did make this hilariosity of a film. So, not really much else to say. And it also has John Travolta acting like a maniac. So, I guess it worked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really like this movie, though. It's, uh, for one, I think it's kind of offensive, but at the same time, it's kind of funny. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe this damn movie. What do you think about it, Jacob? <coughs> I... Uh, I uh... I love this movie. I think it is a cinematic masterpiece. For me, it's up there with uh, Citizen Kane, uh, Clockwork Orange, uh, in regards of like uh, films that are considered like to be the greatest films of all time. Like, like this film, it's a masterclass in direction, acting. John Travolta is magnificent in this film. But my God, this film is utterly abysmal. It is atrocious. <laughs> but I loved. Every minute of it. I'm like, oh, I was wondering when you were going to drop the, I was wondering when you were going to drop the, you know, thing and be like, okay, this movie's bad. <laughs> I can't pretend anymore. <laughs> the, like, this movie is horrendous. I, I can't even, I can't even, like, mince words about it. This movie's horrible. Horrible movie. <sighs> But it's fun to watch. I laughed so hard watching this movie. I actually discovered this delightful piece of trash from uh, Chris Stuckman, which is kind of we that our specialty is kind of knocking him off. But a look, but um, yeah, this this movie, I'm like, okay, I gotta see this, and I saw it, and oh my god, it's a fucking whoo, <laughs> ah, mm. Yeah, it's it's a time. It's a time, my friend. Like, <laughs> just, oh man. Uh, I I I would say this film is, and, and John Travolta's kind of made a specialty of making utterly abysmal movies like Battlefield Earth because he has this particular side of acting where I don't know what it is, but he just fucking goes all in, and it just is it's bizarre. I can't describe it, but. It, it it it's 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 John Travolta's style, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I can tell in his earlier films, even aspects in Pulp Fiction, that he he loves to like go over the top and just just go absolutely like bizarre, bizonkers in films. He just likes to chew the scenery, and this film is a prime example. I'll admit, I've never really been all that big of a fan of John Travolta. I mean, I've seen like Saturday Night Fever is fun and. All that, and he was good in Pulp Fiction, but aside from that, he, there's not a lot of movies I can think of that he's been in that were pretty memorable. Like, he was in Bolt. Do you remember that movie? Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that movie. 
let me tell you, the words generic and boring don't even begin to describe that movie, but I, I digress. But not this film. This film is just... Oh, man, it's ridiculous. Like... <laughs> I, I can't I can't describe it. It's so it's so it's it's a hilariosity, man. That's all I can say. It's there there are certain films out there that are so bad that it kind of becomes entertaining after a while. Oh yeah, and this film is one of them. Oh yeah, I mean it's one of those rare movies that you can just sit back with your friends and get shit faced drunk and just have a good time with. <laughs> this is I can't even get mad at this movie for being bad. I I I, I only laugh. Like it's just uh man. No, it's so entertaining. Like this is one of this is yeah, this is the film I see myself re rewatching over and over again, just laughing my ass off and having a good time. Yeah, it, it's a good one to get drunk with your friends and watch and just f fucking laugh at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this film is uh, and I, I know the John Travolta fans, I mean, if they do exist, they're probably going to get mad at me for saying that, you know, John Travolta, I'm not a big fan, but sorry, I, I, I don't know, I've just never bought into his acting all that much. It's, he must be good in some other movies he, I, I've not, I've probably not seen, but, uh, or well, he was good in Urban Cowboy, that was, that was a, that was a solid movie, if a little generic. <laughs> um but yeah the fanatic ugh oh man how are you even gonna talk about this Jacob do you even know I have no idea <laughs> I okay. think we should just I think we should just like discuss all of the things that are like hilarious. Oh, okay. Let's uh, all right. Let's just take the let's just take the band aid off and just get into this fucking thing. Because I'm just I uh, I uh, all right. Let's do this. So the fanatic begins with this inner monologue that sounds like something out of like a really bad crime film, and it's this woman talking about Hollywood. The land of bullshitters and all that. And it tries to sound so deep. Like, I don't like this. And let me tell you something. This never happens again throughout the entirety of this movie. No, it doesn't. <laughs> like, what is this? Like, I, I don't... I don't know. I... What is this, Jacob? I don't know. I, I wish I knew. But... What... <laughs> And then she, I, I forget exactly what she says, but I remember st st succinctly her saying, Hollywood, the land of bullshitters. And she starts like wax, she's like trying to wax poetic about Hollywood. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? What does this have to do with the movie? Like, Nothing. You're just rambling about fucking Hollywood and trying to make it poetic. Like, exactly. It's like, what the, Fred Durst, what are you doing? What is this shit, man? I love it, though. I love it. It's, awful, it's it. so... It's so bizarre. Like, it's such a bizarre... Oh, uh, well, this actually isn't the most bizarre thing about the beginning of this movie. But she just starts, like, saying some bullshit. I can't forget... Ev I, I can't remember everything she said, aside from the line I just said. But again, never comes up again. Just... Or no, it does. Actually, yes, it does. Why? Or yes, it does. It does come up later. But it's so just. Who needs this? <laughs> like, what does this have to do with the story? What is going on? Like, for instance, taxi driver has inner di inner dialogue, but it's necessary because it's it's necessary to understand what's going on in Travis's mind because if he did if if he didn't use the inner monologues. We wouldn't know what the fuck he was thinking. Like, the audience wouldn't know what was going on. Or, you know, Apocalypse Now, when he's talking about all the stuff he's reading in the file. Pete, the reason that's there is because it's necessary to understand what the fuck is going on and what he's doing and why he's doing it. 
Like, in this, there's no reason for this. No, like, what's the purpose of it? Like, what, what are you, why are you railing on about this bullshit? What does it have to do with this film? Nothing! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fred Durst and Dave Beckerman, for giving us this delightful dialogue about Hollywood. And they're trying to make, like, some point about actors in Hollywood and whatnot. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's amazing, though. It's, it's, it's abysmal, but it's so awesome. It's... Okay. So, she... Like, I guess... Is this where she introduces Moose? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then she, like, starts talking about Moose. And then we end up meeting Moose, played by fucking John Travolta. And here's where the scene gets really fucking ridiculous. He he is this dude with autism. And, you know, he's this guy who... He's like a street performer. And, you know, he just, like, does things to entertain people. And, you know, he likes to hang out. He really loves movies. And he is particularly obsessed with this guy called Hunter Dunbar. But that's for later. So... <laughs> so, the first thing this man says... Like, when we intro he's introduced to the movie. Now, when you're introduced to the movie, you gotta know who this character is, what he's all about, and whatnot. Now, first thing that Homeboy says here is, hang on a second, I gotta poop. <laughs> Best line of dialogue ever in a film. Like, what is this shit? <laughs> the first line out of our main, <laughs> out of the main character's mouth. I can't talk too long. I gotta poo. <laughs> what? What is this? Is Fred Durst should be ashamed of himself. This is the one thing about this movie. I would be offended by John Travolta's portrayal of an autistic person if it wasn't so hilarious. Like... It is utterly, like, I, I tend to not like, you know, I, I tend to not like, you know, fucking shitting on actors, but this performance is just bad. <laughs> I, I say this performance, uh, this was his redemption. This is his best performance since Pulp Fiction, in my opinion. <laughs> No. You know, and I feel bad because he really seems like he's trying here, and it's that's the sad part of this whole fucking movie. Yeah. And this dude is basically a fucking loser, and this is the first line of dialogue that comes out of his mouth. I, I just gotta say that. Who fucking wrote this? I can't... Is Fred Durst so tone deaf that he... He, he filmed that shit, and he thought, okay, this is fine. People are definitely not going to laugh at this and call me an idiot and say I have a small penis for making this movie. <laughs> like, Fred Durst. Fred Durst. Like, you could have came up with any other line of dialogue. Maybe uh, uh, something like, uh, you can't handle the truth or yippee ki motherfucker. But no, the first words that come out of John Travolta's fucking mouth are, I can't believe you got to boo. No, I, I, and, and before you guys start ragging on us for nitpicking, you know what? I wouldn't nitpick here. What does this say about his, but before you start saying we're nitpicking and making fun of just dumb lines, what does this line say about Moose's character? Nothing! Nothing! He just has to take a boo! He just has to take shit, and you're just like, bro, this is just, this is ridiculous. We know nothing about his character from the first moment we meet him. All we know is is that he's kind of socially awkward because of, you know, he has autism and all that. And he just fucking loves these weird old cult horror films from the 80s. Uh, particularly from a guy called Hunter Dunbar, who just is the douchiest guy, but we'll get to that in a second. And most... I can't even describe Moose. The only again, the only attributes about this fucking guy is that he likes old 80s horror movies and action movies 
And he likes this guy called Hunter Dunbar, and that's about it. Just Yeah, that's it, man. He's a bit cuckoo for Cocoa Pups. Yeah, he's also it. just fucking weird as well. And not the good kind of weird. Like, this dude might, like, come in your house and, like, murder your family and type of weird. Yeah. I- <laughs> Uh, John Travolta's performance. This is. Uh, I'm gonna say this. He got fucking robbed. He should have got an Oscar nomination for this performance. Like he is a phenomenal in this. Like he really embodies this character of Moose. Because oh man, just from the first line of dialogue, I can't talk too long. I got a poo. I'm like, oh boy, I'm in for a real treat. I. Uh, God. <laughs> It's continue going on. He only has, like, one or two friends. One is Leah, who is the lady who was, who was, who was narrating at the beginning of the movie for no fucking reason. And then, like, some other guy. I don't fucking know. I, I think Leah's actually his only friend in this movie, which is kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> so... After he takes poop, we end up seeing his fucking house, and it's just uh, it's just memorabilia from movies everywhere, and it's just utterly ridiculous. <laughs> God, oh my goodness, it is utterly abysmal. Oh what my God! Oh my God! Uh, where's the scene where he chokes the guy and he's like threatening to like to kill him or whatever? I forget. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's where we get to that scene. Uh, is that where we get this scene? Because I remember that happening, but I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen I remember the beats of the movie, but it's hard to remember particular scenes. Like, that, that pro- does that speak to the movie's quality? I don't know, but I'm just, I, I don't know. He, uh, he does have a violent streak, though, because I guess some guy calls him a faggot or something, and he, like, starts choking him out and saying he's going to kill him or something, or he's he's saying some weird... What does he say, Jacob? You're better at remembering lines than I am. Oh, I remember. Oh, boy. He chokes him, and then he says, I wish Freddy Krueger would come and chop off your head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the kind of guy we're dealing with here, and we're like, oh god, like this guy's just gonna. This guy's yeah, he's, he seems like he's a little bit nutty. He's a little on the on the crazy side. And John Travolta, man, he's he's giving his all. Say whatever you want, but he's giving his all to this performance. Oh, I think this is best performance he's ever given. He has a lot of range and dynamic to this. In this film, oh man, <laughs> him choking uh, this random person and uh, wishing death on him, uh, saying that I wish Freddy Cougar would chop off your head. It's wonderful. <laughs> this is so stupid. Oh, but it gets better. Oh, it gets better though. <clears throat> oh my god. Okay, so. He's he's cuckoo for Hunter Dunbar, and you know he's he's gonna go meet him, and Leah and him are fucking geeking out about it, and and Leah's all like Moose, what the fuck are you doing? But that's that's for later, that's for later. So Moose f- fucks around, I guess, for a little bit, and then he finally gets the opportunity to meet Hunter Dunbar at a at a fan auction, um, and hopes to get an autograph. For an expensive jacket that he got at a fan auction, actually. Uh, and um, and he's standing in the line. He's all excited, but then uh, Dunbar's ex-wife comes in and starts, like, bitching him out about some bullshit. I forget exactly what it's all about. Yeah, I don't even remember. <laughs> um, oh, yes. Uh, then we get to scene where... Um, where uh, where Moose attempts to, like, meet, uh, attempts to meet Dunbar. It's in some, like, shady alley. It's, like, not shady at all. And it's so over the top. And this Dunbar guy, 
Like, he's just a douche outright. Like, he didn't even try to be nice to Moose. Like, it's not even, like, one of those things where he's trying to be nice to him. And it just turns weird. No, this dude just, like, threatens to kill him. <laughs> this dude yeah, is very like, aggressive from the get-go. And you're just like, what is this? <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet that's, like, particularly creepy. Like, yeah, sure, I'd yeah. be kind of annoyed if he, if a fan of mine was kind of harassing me about this. But, whoa, this is too far. You're threatening to assault him over this. I'd probably be like, hey, man, like, not cool. Like, but, no, nah, he's just like, like, he's just like, get the fuck out or I'll beat your ass. And he's like, well, and he's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, well, like, the dude's not even harassing you. He just wants to meet you and get an autograph. And the first, and, like, you're immediately just, like, get the fuck away from me and threatening him. Like, dude. <laughs> it's like, what like, the fuck is fuck? this? This is so this bizarre. Is where Moose is crazy ass. This is where all the this is <laughs> where all the fan uh, Moose is crazy. This cuckoo ass, but he, like he just wants to meet you. He's a huge fan of you, and you just threaten him. But like the first time you we see Moose and him meet, you just threaten him. I get like if he's like con if he was constantly harassing you, you would threaten him, but. This is the first time you guys are meeting, and you're already threatening him. Like, are you like uh, threatening to kill him, or beat his ass, or put his teeth on the ground, or something? It's so it goes from like one to twenty real quick, and you're just like, where did this come from? Like, what is this? <laughs> Fred Durst, like, what were you thinking? Like, what the? F what is this? Okay, so. Like, that happens, and Moose gets fucking pissed. Like, you know... And here's the thing that's the big problem with this movie. Like, who are you supposed to root for? That's that's the problem with this film in spades, is that... Like, here's Moose, and you're not supposed to, like... You're, you're supposed to kind of pity him, but you're not supposed to empathize with the fact that he's about to violate this man's privacy. But this man, this Hunter Dunbar figure is like the biggest douche around yeah like it makes me wish that moose would do something bad to him y yeah it's like who are we supposed to root for in this nobody <laughs> yeah. are we supposed to watch this movie and just like it's like every time you try to think about this movie it just punishes you it's, it's yeah, one of those like movies like, what, who are we rooting for? We're definitely not rooting for Moose because immediately, like, we're just like, okay, he's playing, he's playing this, all right, this is a fucking crazy dude. Uh, like, what is he doing except just, like, roaming around, just, like, doing whatever, and John Travolta acting his ass off, I'll give him that, and we're meet this Hunter something, whatever the fuck his name is, just the biggest douche ever, and this, uh, Moose's only friend who fucking narrates the movie. Like, uh, 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 there are no characters. There are no <laughs> characters in this movie. It's, <laughs> there it's, are no characters. It's so bad. Like, it's just, what the hell is going on in this? Like, it's like when I try to think about character motivation, it just goes out the. The only one who seems to have a clear motivation is Moose. Like, seriously. Even his motivation is just so basic. Like, he's an obsessed fan of this something character. Yeah, it's stupid. It. Like, what is this, man? That's it. There's nothing else in his character other than that he's autistic and he's a cuckoo for Coke Coke Bells. And he fucking likes to choke bitches out occasionally when they piss him off and say that Freddy Krueger's gonna chop off your fucking head. <laughs> So, it, it's so, like, what is this? Like, this is so, this is such a bizarre movie. And, oh, yeah, we'll see how much Dunbar's a huge douche later, but uh, that's for another part of the movie. Just, oh, my God. It, he tries to, like, meet him in an alleyway, and it's so bad, and he's, <laughs> he's just like, oh, oh, he's like, I'll beat your ass and fuck you, and you're like, where is this coming from? Like, are you trying to give this man a reason to break into your house? Like, is this... <laughs> Do a bunch of other questionable things. <laughs> this film has gone off the rails and we're not even five minutes into this damn movie. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. 
So Moose goes home, disappointed, very upset right now, very pissed off. He ends up meeting Leah, who was the narrator at the beginning of the damn movie. And she's like, yo, that's fucked up. Hey, I got this app I need to show you. She ends up showing an app that, for some reason, publishes the home address of famous celebrities, including Dunbar, which that puts a shitload of question marks, by the way. One, how is this app legal? Two, who made this shit up? Three... What is going on here? <laughs> is this app even legal? I don't think that's 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 certainly a pri that's an invasion of privacy. That is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Like, like how, how can they approve of that app? Like, there are so many logical flaws with this film. Why, why does this app even exist? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a privacy lawsuit waiting to happen. That would be on the news. And people would be like, oh, that's a violation of privacy. What They they should take that down. That would be... Can't, we're in... This is, takes place in the land of Twitter. Like, this shit would be all over the internet. Like, yeah. in a day. Yeah, in real life, it, they wouldn't... Like, who would get that okay? It's like, yeah, let's have an app where you can uh, search for a celebrity's address. Oh, my God. I guess Fred Durst just couldn't think up of a way... Fred Durst and Dave Beckerman, I guess, couldn't think up of a way to have Moose stalk this dude. So they decided to publish this nonsense app, which would probably not be legal in the real world. Including his hero. Like, wh what is this movie? Like... What? Why? <laughs> Why? Like... You could have, you could have came up, Fred Durst. You could have came up with a more uh, semi-compelling way for uh, Moose to search for his, uh, uh, for this uh, Fred something, uh, Hunter something. I keep forgetting his fucking name. Uh, you could have had him like uh, uh, find a strand of his hair and just like uh, uh, research and just like research the fuck out of him or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> just have a tap that. <laughs> What? It's like you could have just had him like like stake out another like fan thing, and he could have just followed him to his house, and that that would have just worked fine. Like, nope. Just here's Leah. We got to make her useful in this movie. She's not just some random chick waxing poetic about Hollywood. Now she got to help him find the address of this famous celebrity. So. Yeah, let's have this app, which again, of questionable legality, that had that publishes the home address of celebrities. Makes yeah, just, no sense at all. Like, what is this? Talk about, talk about lazy storytelling. You just simply have an app. You could have just had Moots just straight up stalk this guy, just it, like, just like uh, uh, following his every move and just like um, having a telescope and just like uh, uh, you know, just like uh seeing everything he does and what he is doing. But nope, we just have an app. Oh, here's his address. Now I can find him. Thank you, best friend and my only friend. <clears throat> God. So, <laughs> wait, is this later when we get the other dialogue where she, oh no, this, that's later. Never mind. So, Moose ends up getting Dunbar's address and we end up meeting Dunbar, and he's hanging out with his son. And if you can, if you didn't already could tell that this dude was a tool, he starts listening to Limp Biscuit, which is Fred Dur the director's Fred Durst band. Now, I do not bitch about product placement as much as other people do, because to me. That's just dumb. That's pointless. Like, look, you gotta make your money, right? Like, who gives a shit, you know? I mean, if it's something as obnoxious as, like, Mike Myers from Cat in the Hat, then, yeah, I'd have an issue with it. But I usually don't have an issue with product placement. Like, you know what? You gotta get your money? Fine, whatever. I'm not gonna have an issue with that. This is the most egregiously shameless self-promotion I have ever ever seen. 
Like, what the fuck? Is this dude living his nostalgia boner for the 90s? The late 90s? Like... And he, and he tells his son, like, yeah, you should listen to this stuff. Yeah, Limp Biscuit. Definitely not pandering to the audience. Hey, check out my band. He's like, Fred Dirt. Like, this is the most on-the-nose self-promotion of yourself ever. This is the most on-the-nose product placement ever. And uh, I'm same with you. I don't make fun of product placement. Unless if they just, like, if it's overkill, like, uh, most of Michael Bay's movies are amazing, Spider-Man 2, for example. But this film, just him listening to Fred Durst, listening to Limp Biscuit, it is just so on the nose. Again, I bet you're like, wow, this is super nitpicky, but you know what? It fucking bothers me. I don't know why, but it bothers me, and I don't like it. And I can already tell you this dude's just an uber douchebag, because, you know, I mean, fuck, I'm, I'm, you know what, I'm not going to go there, because I'm, I don't want to get fucking limp, if there's, I don't want to get the one or two Limp Biscuit fans to get mad at me, okay, like, this just, <coughs> but, yeah, so, fucking, he shows up back at his house, and then there's Moose again, who wants his fucking autograph, and he's like, please just give me an autograph, I, I have a letter for you, oh, he goes the letter route, Oh, he gives him the, we can play ball together, like, the Mets from Mac, from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia type of letter. And he's trying to beg him for an autograph. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love this movie. <laughs> so, he confronts him, but then Dunbar, again, decides to just be an utter douche to Moose and just... He's threatening to... Now he's like, I'm gonna beat your ass and kill you again. Just like... Whoa! Whoa, but... Like, okay. Maybe it's a little justified here, but dude, it's kind of... Again, you're going from 1 to 20 like like that. You're just like, dude. <laughs> Who are we supposed to root for in this movie? Nobody! I don't know! So, so, Moose is, is just fucking, I don't know, but Moose just starts, and he threatens him, he threatens with him with violence, and then he's like, get out of my neighborhood, and Moose just is like, he fucks off for a little bit, then he comes back. Here's some comedic gold for you right here. He, he comes back to his house. And fucking his his housekeeper, his his stereotypically Mexican housekeeper is there and scares him off. And it's just like, oh, my God. And we'll get to her later. It's just like, oh, my God. But then he's scared off by Dunbar. He comes back again. And he eventually gains entry in the house. But then we get another just comedic gold where the housekeeper catches Moose trying to enter the house, and she starts freaking out, understandably, and just starts whacking him with a... <laughs> starts whacking him with his... <laughs> just starts... Starts whacking him with her, like, little thing, and then Moose is like, oh, oh, just like... <laughs> just like a child he just starts whining and then he just like smacks her in the face and she ends up hitting her head on the on a on a fountain he has and it kills him <laughs> moose is a murderer now moose he just simply jumps her just whoops just did a murder <laughs> God, okay. It, 
it's like I I I can't even describe just Oh my god. All I can say, it's all insane. I can say, all I can say, this is one of the most suspenseful moments ever in film. It is so Oh oh man, the suspense is killing me. It's nerve shredding. It is phenomenal. As as he attempts to as he attempts to try and gain access into the house and he sees Dunbar again, who is just fed up now. And now he's just like, I, you're a stalker, and I'm going to fucking kill you if you come back again. Which, again, you're just like, what is this? What is going on here? Is this supposed to be like a comedy? Is that what this is? is? You're doing a great job. If it is, you're doing great, but if this is a suspenseful movie, this is going horribly. <laughs> I, I actually think it is suspenseful. It's really intense and just... <laughs> it's hilarious. It's comedic it's, gold. It... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm getting over a sickness. But... So, again, he goes from, like, 1 to 20. Now, understandably now, because he just killed your housekeeper. But then we get fucking Moose having a complete breakdown. And then we get just the mwah of the scene. Because Leah comes back. And she's like, oh, he didn't just cross the line. He fucking nuked it. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? That means nothing! <laughs> that means absolutely nothing! But it is the best line of dialogue ever I've ever heard in a film. It's... <laughs> it's just... He just crossed the line. He fucking duped it. <laughs> and I love how I love how she says it too. It's super she's like super dramatic, like she he didn't just cross the line. He fucking nuked it. <laughs> oh my god. And I, I get what she means, just like just like he just he went in and just started fucking with him, but it's like, dude, that makes that is the dumbest nonsense line I have ever heard in my life. Oh my god. Uh, I think that line of dialogue, I think that line added, added, added to the suspense even more. Like, oh man. Oh, he, he didn't just cross the line. He fucking nuked it. And she wants us to be terrified and suspenseful, but no, we're, we're fucking laughing our asses off more at the movie. Yeah, it's just it's one of the funniest lines ever. It's not it's not it's not uh, terrifying or just like oh my god, <laughs> this is gonna get so this is gonna get good. We're just like this is gonna get even funnier. Also, again, seriously, what does this line have to do with anything? Why isn't it Moose narrating the line? But his friend is. Yeah. Why, why the fuck is she narrating? Again, makes no sense. Why is she our narrator of this film? Shouldn't our main character, Moose, should, shouldn't he narrate because he's the main character? That I, would make a lot more sense. I mean, it would, characters? but this film has defied logic several times, so I, I, I can't expect... Every time it, you want it to seem realistic, it just punishes you, so I, I, I've given up at this point. I don't know about you. I've already given up <laughs> by the first line coming out of John Travolta's mouth. Oh my god. Probably. And <laughs> this line, like, again, what does this have to do with the movie, and why is it Leah, the friend, who's barely in this fucking movie, why does she say it? It's ridiculous. Yeah. That's the other thing that frustrates me. She's barely in this movie, and yet she's the narrator of this. How does that make any fucking sense? It's ridiculous. Like... And, you know, again, you could just say, oh, you're just nitpicking. But seriously, again, you know, you know, I learned a few years ago from a guy I watched who was a film student. It says every shot in a movie and every line in a movie 
must have a purpose. There must be a reason for this shot or this line or this choice to be in this movie. And I can't think of anything that justifies this movie's existence. Like, for instance, what is it trying to say? You know, like, what themes is it trying to convey? What are the characters going through? We don't get any of that through this movie. <laughs> no, there are no characters who have <coughs> motivations or arcs in this film other than Moose, whose arc is just so, as I said, basic as fuck. It's cliched as all get out, too. Yeah, exactly. It's so cliched. And there's no story here. In every line of dialogue, every narr narration, it mean, it serves nothing to this movie. We're just watching this movie and seeing uh, John Travolta just uh, going over the top. That's it. That's all this movie is. Like, you thought Gaudy was bad? Oh, you haven't seen nothing yet, sister. Like, this film... Cool. But again, this film doesn't do nary a thing to justify why it's been made. Aside from just random shit. I can't even... That's all this film is. It's just a bunch of random stuff happening. Yeah, exactly. It's just a crazy guy going up against a super douchey guy. And it's, it's really bad. And it's super dumb. That's it. <coughs> that's all this film is like if this were a comedy like that that would be different but no they're trying to play this 100% seriously and it's so bad this film is awful yeah. it is so bad but I love it it's a master class in filmmaking oh my god <laughs> I love it. Oh I my hate God. it. Too. Okay, so Moose just has a fucking breakdown, and after that fucking epic line that Leah said, for whatever reason, <laughs> um, he returns and just he just he goes full just crazed stalker mode. He ties Dunbar up in the bed, and oh wait, I think we missed some stuff when he broke in his house. Oh, like yes. when he plays the piano. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, he goes around his house and just starts doing random shit, like playing the piano and like yelling lyrics to something. He dresses up as like a cop. And somehow doesn't wake him up. And, and does like a British accent. Or wait, maybe that was earlier in the movie. But I think he does it again. He like, he ties his ass up and then like takes selfies with him and then kisses his head. <laughs> Which is so... What is this? It's just like, no! 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 What is this? He scratches his ear and it sniffs his <laughs> It's so... <laughs> he, like, sniffs his hair. It's like, it's so... Oh, God. It's like, oh, my God, no! No! This is just... Ugh. Like... Why not just give him a blowjob while he's sleeping? Like, oh God, God. <laughs> that's like, gonna work. What else is this? What, is, what else is he gonna do? Like, you've already kissed him on the head and took a selfie with him, and just, uh, fucking moose. Oh my God, like it. <laughs> Think about just. <coughs> <coughs> and. Oh man. God. And it's just, it, he just, he's just doing random shit around the house. Like, he's, like, making food and, like, kissing his head and then sniffing him. And oh, it's so, <laughs> it'd be so, it'd be so creepy if it weren't hilarious. Like, it's just, uh, God. We could think, we could think John Travolta's performance on that film, on that scene just being so hilarious. Because, oh my God, because... We should be creeped out, but we're just having a good time, just laughing our asses off. Oh, God. So, after messing with Dunbar for a little bit, Dunbar wakes up from his, like, nap or whatever the fuck was going on with him. 
and he sees Moose just fucking lying on the floor. It looks like he died, and he's like, oh, shit! Oh, God! Ah! Help! Help me! And then Moose just fucking pops up, and he's like, yeah, I, I scared Hunter Dunbar! I scared Hunter Dunbar! It is so... <laughs> it's an amazing <laughs> scene and Dr. Travolta's acting range like he really showcases his acting talents in this <laughs> oh god yes he showcases why he's a tour de force in the acting world oh my god oh this movie and Devin's just like what the fuck man <clears throat> and then he just like he's like he's scared Hunter Dunbar and then, like, later on, he ends up dressing up as Jason Voorhees and pretends to stab him! <laughs> Except it's with a retractable knife, so he's like, oh, shit! And he's like, oh, I scared him again! Oh, my God! And it's just like, dude, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this movie. It's just... It's like, what is this film? It is so... Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an actor just like you, and he's all like, dude, he's all like, oh my god, dude, this is crazy, and then, and then Dunbar is fucking terrified now. He's all like, yo, Moose, like, it's like, please just untie me, and I will, I will give you all the autographs and your friendship. Man, I'll even suck your penis. Like it'll, it'll be like that. And he's all, and Moose, he considers this, and then he's like, okay. And then, and then, and then we get just the most, just the biggest 180 I've ever seen in a movie. Just, I, you know what, Jacob, I'll let you take this real quick before I just start talking about this baffling scene here. But, oh my God. yeah, just, just. All right, uh, just sit back. Uh, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Moose is just like, okay. Then Dunbar just fucking attacks him. He gets a shotgun, shoots off a few of his fingers, and then, he, and, then, and then he pushes him down a flight of stairs. And he just fucking goes off all railing on him. And then, and then like, he just stabs <laughs> Moose is just whining like a little baby. <laughs> just like, <laughs> and then, and then we get to the best part of this. The best part of this fucking scene, of this hilarious scene. Moose is sim Dunbar. He just simply kicks him out. Moose just simply walks out of his house. Okay. And that's it. Okay. What is this scene? Like, what? What is going on here? Hold it. Stop. <laughs> Cut, everybody. What is going on here? This needs to stop now. Like, what is this? He just mauls this man. I mean, okay, there's justifiable self defense, and then there's this shit that Dunbar did. He was not merely defending himself. He was, he just fucking, he was torturing this man. Which you're just like, what is going on here? He shot his fingers off, then he stabbed him in the eye and like throws him down the stairs, like Jacob just said. And then he's just like, oh, you can leave. Like, and then, and then, like, he like sees him crying there and he's all like, oh, I guess you can leave. Like, you can leave now. What? Oh, that's it. What the fuck is this scene? 
Why didn't you call the cops? You, they're just, this is so baffling for many reasons. Like the number one, if you're like not like a, like you haven't been living under a rock, the first question you would ask is, why the hell did he not call the police? No, he just simply says you can go home. That's it. After you fucking mauled him, <laughs> his fingers, and then stabbed him in the eye, <clears throat> while he was fucking whining like a little fucking baby defenseless, and then you're like, you can go now. You can call the fucking cops! And it just adds on to the, it just adds on to the douchiness of this fucking character. <laughs> now this character is just like, it has never been, like, it's never been, like, it's never been, like, hinted in this movie that this man, like, has a violent streak in him at all. Just that he's super douchey, and he, like, threatens to, like, harm people who ask him for autographs. No, he just, like, shoots him. He suddenly just goes on this rampage, and he just, like, shoots him, and then he stabs him, and he throws him down the stairs, and you're like... What is going on here? Like, guys, cut. Just, just cut. What is this? What is going on here? Why doesn't he call the cops? It's just like, that's the one question I'd ask about this whole scene. It's like, nobody acts right in this scene. Maybe except again for Moose. Moose is like the only sane person in this movie. <laughs> And that housekeeper. The housekeeper is like the only sane person in this movie. Because <coughs> she's the only one who acts at least a little appropriately. Like. Like, when you're tied up, when a, a crazy autistic man, played by John Travolta, ties you up and pretends to be Jason Voorhees and then pretends to stab you, the first thing you would do, you, was call, you would call the cops, right? But no, you just fucking mauled this person, shoot off, shooting off his fingers, stabbing him in the eye, and you're like, oh, you can go home now. I guess I was being a little too hard on you. That's it! <laughs> what the fuck is this movie? I don't know, Jacob, but this film is... I don't know, man. But this movie's out of its fucking mind. I just... <laughs> this film breaks its own rules several times. Like, it's just like, here's some random shit. That, that's literally what this movie is. Just a bunch of random shit happening. Yeah, that's it. There's no real story. There's no story here. As you said, it's just a bunch of... <laughs> random shit. Just a bunch of random shit happening. That's all this film is. Oh, uh, Fred Durst directed it uh, uh, from Limp Biscuit, from the band Limp Biscuit, and John Travolta's in this. That's all. That's all this film is. And then Moose's friend fucking narrates it, even though she's barely in this fucking movie. But yeah, she narrate this movie. And then uh, we have this celebrity named Dumbart, who's the douchiest person you'll ever meet. That's it. Yeah, that's all this fucking movie is. Yeah, this this film is just fucking abysmal. On just I gotta I just gotta take that band aid off. This movie is just like, what is this? This might be our shortest episode. We're already near the end. Like that tells you how fast this movie goes along. But oh my god, this film is insane. It is. It is a masterpiece in my eyes. It's my favorite movie of all time. I'm just gonna say it. It's my favorite movie of all time. But it is absolutely abysmal. <laughs> God. Like, Moose just starts fucking crying. And then he lets him leave. You're just... It, I, I'm still baffled by this. I know! <laughs> After all that you've done to this poor Moose character, now you feel bad for this Moose character who we are like, this dude's fucking crazy, but now we're just like... And now you're just like, you can go home. God. <laughs> this film is just... <clears throat> Moose is just like, I'm gonna just 
Moose just starts wandering the streets, and he's just fucking, he's just sobbing, and he's like, he's looking like a crazy person, and there's some tourists who are actually kind of impressed with them, and this is actually a scene I kind of like, because the passing tourists who, like, see him, they request to take photos with him, because they think his wounds are a part of, like, a costume, And it's I, I like the scene because I like how John Travolta plays it. He even kind of goes along with it. That's kind of funny, but I kind of like yeah. that scene. Me too. That is that is literally the only scene in this movie that I like. I was like, okay, that's not. I like that. That's not too bad. And uh, uh, Moose uh, is just playing along with it. Even smiles, kind of smiles. I like that. That's it. That's the only thing I like. I truly, genuinely like about this movie. And then Leah. Finds him. Leah shows up out of nowhere. Again, never explains how she found him. How she knew what the hell was going on. Nothing. She just sees him and says, Holy shit, dude! And then takes him to the hospital. And he's like, dude, you gotta go to the hospital. And then this movie... Then this movie just goes... Then... Here we go to the... Here's the home run of this movie. Dunbar is being arrested by the police because they think he killed the housekeeper. And that's the end of the movie. Because they think he killed Dunbar because he think Dunbar killed her. And that's the end of the movie. Yeah. They're, they're, oh, my God. Here, I'll let, I'll let Jacob take it from here, but I'm going to rant about this. But, you, Jacob, again, you, you take it. Just, All righty. Oh, boy. This ending of the movie. Dunbar gets arrested... There are so many, there are so many issues from this ending alone. First off, you're a big fucking celebrity, right? You can just say like this fucking crazy dude named Moose that broke into my house and tried to pretend to be Jason Voorhees, try to kill me. And uh, another thing, th on the on these cops right here, the laziest fucking cops ever. Moose's DNA is all over that fucking lady because he shoves her, right? You can just check for DNA. You're like, oh, yeah, it was that Moose guy. Dunbar, is in it. you're innocent. Oh, my fucking God. LA's, so fi many... LA's finest, ladies and gentlemen. But continue what you were saying. There are so many fucking flaws in that ending alone. It is just... It is abysmal. It is baffling. <laughs> All right. Like, ugh. All right, you go on. You, you take this from here, Britain. This oh, has to be... The stupidest ending I have seen in a long time. Dur, like Jacob said here, like Jacob so so accurately said here, there are so many question marks with this ending alone. For one, why is Dunbar being arrested? <laughs> Yeah, he's a huge douche. And yeah, he just straight up tried to... He basically fucking tortured Moose there for a minute. But he didn't do anything wrong. Like, all they have to do is just scan the house. Because, like Jacob said, Moose's DNA is probably all over the place. Nope. They're just like, fuck you. We're taking you. You're under arrest. That's the laziest police work I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> This cannot be real. Like, he could just say, there is a crazy man who came into my house and Dunbar doesn't even, like, try to protest. He just goes along with it. Like, dude, just say a crazy man broke into your house and killed your freaking... killed your, la killed your housekeeper lady. I didn't do shit. And I'm sure they would have found fingerprints everywhere. Nope, they take him in. It's just a huge middle finger to the audience for, like, trying to understand what's going on here. And it just, like, breaks logic. It's the most contrived way to have, like, Moose get away with everything when the cops are just being lazy and don't want to do their jobs. It's, like, it's so bad. Like, this cannot be realistic. I have heard of cops being bad at their jobs, but this is so amateurish. Like, how... This cannot be real. If I were a cop, I would be offended by this. 
Yeah, I would. I would honestly just quit my job. Just be just watching this alone. It's like so. This is how uh, the force works, right? They just assumed that Dunbar did all this shit without checking for evidence. I mean, Moose's DNA is all over the fucking place. They don't even check for DNA. None of that. They just assumed that Dunbar <laughs> did all this shit. And like Britton said, he doesn't even like. Uh, he doesn't even like. Uh, yeah, he doesn't even. Oh my god. Uh, this movie. He does. Yeah, he doesn't even try to defend himself. It's like, no, I didn't do this. This crazy man named Moose uh, broke into my house and did all this. Nothing. He just goes along with it, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> it's the biggest like f u ending since like the Amazing Spider-Man two. It's just so bad. It's like it really is. It's, it's so devoid of logic. It's like, like if I were, again, if I were a cop, I would just be offended by this. Like, I would just cringe at this. I'd be like, they didn't check the house at all for, they didn't even try to take a statement from him. Because, I mean, I'm not a cop, so I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert on police work, but I'm pretty sure they would have tried to get like a statement from him first. Before they go up and arrest him. This movie does not make any sense. This film is nonsensical. It really is. That's the best word to describe this film. It's nonsensical. <laughs> they just go up to his house and just arrest him. That's it. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I have a cop friend. And I, I, I'm, I'm now tempted to ask him. If, if, this, if, this, if this sort of situation actually happened... Would they just immediately arrest him, the guy in the house, just without checking the place? Nope. These are the laziest cops ever put in. Put this on is the film. dumbest cops ever. Like I, I tend to be like, um, and I get it. Like, cops aren't perfect, but come on, like they can't be this <laughs> stupid. No. They, oh my god. There are so many question marks in that ending alone. It is it is laughable. It's baffling. <laughs> it is abysmal. There's so many question marks about this movie in general. We just discussed the plot in like an hour, like but there are question marks all over this movie. <laughs> uh man, this like, movie. One why did they decide to go on with an over monologue? Or did they go with a monologue at the end of the movie? Do you remember? I, th I think they did. Yeah. Did they? I don't remember. Maybe they did. But I do, I do know this. We get two end credits in this. Oh, God. I, I forgot about this. Yeah. We get two credits. The opening credit. Uh, the Fanatic starring John Travolta as Moose. And then the ending. John Travolta as Moose. Directed by Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit, the fanatic. God, I don't even know. Look <laughs> at the ending. I don't even know. But ugh, oof, this movie. Fred Durst. Like what? <laughs> This film is just, what is this film? Like, that's the question for today. Like, what is this movie? Nothing makes sense in this movie. Like, there's kind of a story going on, but aside from that, all of the stuff, there's just question marks everywhere. And I could suspend my suspension of disbelief, but there are times I could put my foot down and say, this is too illogical for my tastes. Like, there is no way to logically explain this. No. Th 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 it's just people doing random shit. It's just a bunch of random shit happening. There's no real story. There are no real characters. Not even the title of the movie makes any fucking sense. It's just suddenly... Yeah, I, I didn't even... I, I, I totally didn't even conceive. The Fanatic. What does that even mean? Nothing! <laughs> <laughs> is it because he's a big fan? Is it because he's a big fan of Dunbar? Like, why is it called The Fanatic? 
You should just tell the, the crazy fan named Moose or uh, I gotta take a poo or something like that. Or say like uh, uh, crazy fan with uh, starring John Travolta. But the fanatic? What does that even mean? It's for this movie! <coughs> it's basically a worse version of a Lifetime movie. Exactly. At least with those, you know they're gonna be bad. This film is like trying to be good. But it's utterly abysmal. From scene no, one all the way to the, to, to the end. But it's hilarious, so I, 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 I can't. Like. Yeah, this is just a more comedic rip. This is just a like a more comedic ripoff of one hour photo. Yes. A more, yes. And uh, the only thing I'll give to this movie is that it inspired me to go see one hour photo, which is actually a legitimately good movie. With uh, Robin Williams in one of his few dramatic roles. Yeah, I'll give that movie that. It inspired me to go watch that film. And it was a good movie. I'd much rather watch One Hour Photo over The Fanatic. Yeah, it, it's a much deeper exploration of this exact same topic. Yeah, it's not just a bunch of random people doing random shit. For no and reason. To playing an autistic person. It should be completely offensive... But it's just, it's so hilarious that you can't be offended by it. <coughs> exactly. It's just like, this film is so bizarre in every way possible. The dot. Everything about this movie is just a question mark. The dialogue. The pacing. The storytelling. The directing. The music. All of it. The acting in this movie. Question marks everywhere. It... Like, a detective could see this film and just be utterly baffled by it. This how incoherent this film is. The, the feel of this movie and the direction, it feels like I'm watching a uh, Limp Biscuit music video. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, because it was made by the guy who's part of Limp Biscuit. Which is not a good band, by the way. I've, I've heard their music, and it's just... That ain't it, Chief. Nope, it's just another Limp Bizkit music video. Yeah, if I, if I ever get dragged to one of their concerts, I'll just throw fucking Rotten Tomatoes at them and say that fucking Fanatic sucked. Fanatic fucking sucked! Yeah, we'll just, pant, we'll just pelt them with the... With tomatoes. We're probably going to get kicked out, but, you know, you know. <laughs> and we're probably going to get assaulted, but it'll be fine. This film is just ridiculous. <laughs> it is absolutely abysmal, but I love every minute of this fucking movie. <laughs> movie oh yeah matter. there's there's so many question marks at the end of this damn movie like what's gonna happen to moose what the fuck is gonna happen to dunbar are they ever gonna figure out that you know moose is behind this whole damn thing it's never explained nope, nope. it just ends just, yeah just it that's it does he get caught or does he just get away with it we don't know there, there, uh, this film just this film just has a big question mark. Exactly. This, they should have just told this film simply with a question mark because that's what this film is. It's a big fucking question mark. <clears throat> there are so many logical flaws in this film. It's not even funny. They stick out like a sore thumb. Apparently, uh, Fred Durst said that this is inspired by when he was stalked. By a real life fan. Well, in all honesty, I hope it didn't go like this, Mister Durst, because uh, wow, I I que I would question the hell out of all of that. Yeah, I would question if this actually happened in real life. Yeah. This fucking movie. This film is utterly insane. <laughs> it is. <laughs> In every way possible. But I love it. 
No, oh, yeah, the, apparently the guy who plays uh, Hunter Dunbar is the same guy who played Stan in Eminem's, you know, song Stan, the music oh. video. Which I didn't even recognize him, but yeah, apparently that's 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 some that's a thing. I see what you did there, Fred Durst. Aha! Oh, I didn't even catch that at first. Son of a bitch. Just figure that out. <laughs> Fred Durst, man. This film is utter this film is utter insanity. Yeah. There are so many adjectives I could just describe about this film, but <laughs> there's one if there's one word that I could describe this film. It is just insanity. Oh god, yes. Oh god. This he even movie. made the long shots. D did you see that movie? Oh god. Yeah. The long shots. Yeah, Talk I mean, about a cliched boring movie. Yeah, I forgot about that movie. I forgot about it too until I just saw this today and we were about to talk about this damn movie. I also saw the, I, I forgot the name of it, with Ice Cube. That was another fucking terrible movie. Uh, yeah, that was the long shot, so that's the one I was just talking about. So that's it? Man, that movie's so forgettable. <laughs> <laughs> just, and apparently he made another movie called The Education of Charlie Banks, which, after watching this film, I don't even know if I want to watch that. Yeah, I probably won't watch it. You know what? Fred Durst, I think he outdid himself with this film because this is a masterclass in direction of how absolutely abysmal this is. There are so many question marks. This film is just a big question mark. There are so many logical flaws in this film. There are no characters. There is no real story. And, there, and there's no one to root for, as Britain said. There is nobody to root for. We just, uh, we don't even root for Moose. We just know that he's our main character. He's he's kind he's of endearing, like actually. It's it's like he's fun to watch, despite the fact he's utterly deranged and has no fucking motivation aside from stalking Hunter Dunbar. Nothing. He's just a fucking crazy man. No, there's no deeper points to be made in this movie aside from like a half-assed attempt to talk about how how actors inspire Hollywood worship in the first two seconds of this movie. And uh, once again. They, uh, the way that Moose finds dumb man, whatever his name is, is through a fucking app where you can just search his address. Yeah, don't forget that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how is that legal? Exactly. Exactly. I don't know. How is that legal? Don't know. Don't care. Utterly ridiculous. <laughs> and why did they arrest Dunbar when they could just look around and see that this someone else had been in the house. Like, it's... This film is utterly insane. <laughs> this film is just the prime example of what the fuck. Yeah, it only got, it only got $3,000 at the box office. Which, that's just pitiful. That is the bombest of bombs. Like, not even in the good way. This is, that's just... Oh, my God. Like, Fan Forstick made more money than The Fanatic. The Lord <laughs> Bender made more money than The Fanatic. That is just sad. Oh, my God. This is probably the least amount of money I've seen for a box office. I'm surprised this didn't break any records. <laughs> Literally, look at the Wikipedia, and it's in the, it's on the it's on the ho it's on this Hollywood Reporter actor on this on this article for the Hollywood Reporter box office. John Travolta hits career low as the fanatic bombs. <clears throat> like, so like legit, legit, man. <laughs> yep, it is legit. I'm on box office mojo right now. Three thousand dollars. <laughs> this film is just. It's the film that keeps on giving, man. Oh, God. Grease. How can I forget about Grease? That's just sad. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. It's... Oh. Oh, man. This oh, my Lord. It's just... 
Oh yeah, he was also in. He's been in a couple of hilariosities these last couple of years. Yeah. <clears throat> John Travolta, man, I'm in. <clears throat> I mean, he seems like a great guy in real life, but as an actor, I've never been a big fan of him. But in this film, The Fanatic, he was hilarious, hilariously bad in this, and I loved every minute that he appeared on this. Oh film. yes. He was delightful. <laughs> <laughs> and once again. I can't I'm believe it made $3,000. I'm still laughing about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's baffling. That's sad. That's sad. <clears throat> $3,000. That's so That's sad. It's just sad. <laughs> and once again, the first line that comes out of Moose's mouth. I can't talk too long. I gotta poo. <laughs> oh, apparently the film, the production company that made this, uh, Quiver Distribution, made such masterpieces like Running with the Devil with Nicolas Cage and Lawrence Fishburne and The Murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. Oh, An God. utterly abysmal... An exploitative film. Oh, God. I, forgot, I totally forgot about that fucking movie. Uh, well, I don't recommend it on this channel, by the way. That movie is... All, I don't even want to talk about it. That's how bad it is. Yeah, at least The Fanatic. It's hilarious and enjoyable to watch, but that film is just... It's just straight up bad. But yeah, The Fanatic. I love this movie. It is abysmal. It is horrible. It is a big question mark. But I love this film. It is a masterpiece in my eyes. Yeah, this film is utterly ridiculous in, like, the right way. Yes. This is yet another So Bad It's Good movie. It joins up there with The Room and Battlefield Earth, which is another John Travolta a, a hilariosity as one of the peak hilariosities in the history of film. I mean, I, I would have thrown all the raspberries at this film. Worst writing, worst acting, worst directing. Like, I would have thrown it all at this movie. Oh, yeah, and Catwoman. It joins Catwoman, which oh, I'd yeah. love to talk about that movie someday. Whew. Oh, boy. Yeah, that would be a fun one. Oh, my God, but the fanatic. This film gets, like, an F. It's one of those yeah, rare films I would po I could possibly give a one star to. And that's extremely rare for me. But I don't know. But this film yeah, is a, bad. Yeah. It is a big fucking F for me. In regards to just a film, it's a big fucking F. But in regards to the hilariosity, and it's so bad it's good way, it's an A+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It was also put out by Redbox. Oh. Oh, Redbox. Oh, 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 it's like poor man's Netflix. Seriously, they put this shit out. That's the best you could do to, to try and, like, compete with, with Netflix. Okay, yeah, sure. That's, that's fine. That explains, that explains why this movie fucking bombed. They couldn't fuck it red box anymore. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and it's directed by... Fred, Fred Durst. Durst, the leader of Limp Bizkit. Of and he earned $3,000, uh, don't forget that, ladies and gentlemen, at the box <laughs> office. $3,000. Which way you make more money than that, Phil? <clears throat> I mean, let's see how let's see how much The Room made, actually, this, this movie. Oh, it, it, oh no, that made, oh, that made even, oh, that was even worse. Okay, so I'll give it this. There's not enough. The, the room is w earned $1,000, almost $2,000. Man. That's ridiculous. But $3,000, that's also pretty ridiculous, like. 
Oh my god. And you know what's even worse? I think Chris Stuckman's money went into the box office right here. That's that's the sad part of this. Yeah, I feel bad. No, I mean, he had a good time with this, so you got your money's worth. Yeah, I guess that's true. Huh. Josh Milliken, before we, we go off to other things, Josh Milliken of Dread Central called the film a riveting indie with genuine suspense. And he praised both Travolta's and Sawa's performance. I don't know what the fuck this dude was on, but uh, I, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, you're just playing wrong. I, I, everyone's entitled to their opinions, but I'm sorry. It's just one of those cases where you're just wrong. Yeah, it's clear that you were on acid or something, writing your thoughts on this or something. Yeah. A riveting indie. With genuine suspense. That's just insulting to uh, genuinely riveting and suspenseful movies that are good and well crafted. That, you know what? I'm just gonna that we should just put that on a shirt. You know how like Ralph the movie. I don't know if you've ever seen Ralph the Movie Maker, but oh, yeah. he has things where he'll like find little sound bites from like directors or something or like from behind the scene like Amazing Spider-Man 2 there's this like part where Mark Webb's like yes yes good 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 and he made that into a shirt we should do that with a riveting indie with genuine suspense it just seems like one of those lines and just slap John Travolta's face on there yep just just slap him as Moose on there and just sell them and it's like it's Britain Jake merch man (laughs) <laughs> so you can sue us just for parody purposes yep there's our merch right there <laughs> genuine suspense and, and oh yeah if they try to sue us we'll just say it's for parody purposes and we'll get off so yeah good luck with that except we're probably not going to really make any money off that yeah you need to start a merch store <laughs> we should <laughs> that, 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 that's yeah but yeah, mostly everyone hated this movie, <laughs> the cr- t- critic wise. Unless you're Josh Milliken of Dread Central. Yeah, <coughs> like this movie. I I have not met a single like, person who unironically liked this movie. No, and not in a joking way where they're like, "Oh, it's so amazing! It's so horrible, though." I have not met one person who genuinely liked the fanatic. Oh, like it did get genuine. golden. It did get Razzies. So, there we go. Well deserved. Well fucking <laughs> We got, it got nominated for three Golden Raspberry Awards. Razzies. Uh, it got Worst Picture, Worst Director, and Worst Actor. Well deserved, I have to say. Should have gotten nominated for all the nominations. Oh, yes. But, oh boy. It should have gotten nominated for worst costume and makeup because John Travolta's fucking wig. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh god, I don't even know which movie it looks worse in, Gotti or this film. Probably this movie. film because it just looks like a rag on his head. They just cut off the fucking mop and they put it on his head. Yeah, that's it. I've heard Gotti is just straight up bad. Oh, it's like oh, a- it's abysmal. One of the worst gangster films I've ever seen. I'd, oh really? Oh yeah, uh, it's so bad. Like it's not even hilarious. Like this movie, it's just bad. I'm intrigued to go watch it to see how bad it is. Oh my god! I mean, you can watch Ralph the Movie Maker's like takedown of that movie, which I highly recommend. One of his best, you know, one of his best videos. That was legitimately more entertaining than watching that damn movie. Oh, 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 there are some hilarious bits in the movie, though. So maybe you could say it's a hilariosity in some ways. Oh, most definitely. This film is just... Oh, my God. This movie is freaking bad. <laughs> it is absolutely abysmal, as I like to say on here. It is abysmal, but it is phenomenal. Yeah, it, it just showcases the, just, it just showcases how low John Travolta has fallen from his, you know, good old days being in Pulp Fiction, which was basically a fluke, but I digress. Yeah, that was, well, 
I enjoy Face Off. That's a guilty pleasure of mine. But yeah, I that Face Off is a fun movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I like that movie. But Pulp Fiction is the only genuinely good film, and I don't even love that film. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying that. I don't even love Pulp Fiction, but that was sort of his like redemption in a way. But after that film, he just fell hard on his fucking face. Oh my god. I I don't did he have like a thing like Nicolas Cage where he just blew an unholy amount of money and he had to like take these shitty movies to like pay it back? I have no idea. Or maybe he just uh just willingly chose bad movies. Or maybe he's just that awful at picking scripts. I I don't know. Or maybe it's Scientology. It's it's, it's probably Scientology who picks these shitty scripts for him. So uh yeah, thanks probably. Scientology. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea about John Travolta. But at least Nicolas Cage, like, he came back with a few good movies, like Mandy, Color Space, Color Space, or the most recent one, Pig, which I recommend, by the way. But <laughs> John Travolta, he hasn't been in a good movie since Pulp Fiction. That's sad. And nothing against him personally. He seems like a great guy in real life. But if I were a filmmaker, I wouldn't have him fucking touching one of my movies. I wouldn't have him star in my movies. Oh, honestly, I'm kind of going on the Will Smith route. I, I I hope he does get better movies, but after making abominations like this, I highly doubt he'll get, like, better films. Yeah, at least with Will Smith, I can kind of have hope because at least he'll get, he'll, he'll choose some good films like King Richard or Pursuit of Happiness. But John Travolta, after seeing The Fanatic and I have the Gotti, for what I've heard, yeah, I've lost hope in him being in a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, this movie's just freaking bad. Not much else to say. Yeah. But this was fun. I had a great time with this. Oh, man. I've <laughs> Closing thoughts, and then would you mind talking about some other things? Maybe some, some better movies out there? That, or, well, I don't know, but, yeah, yeah. would you like to talk about another movie real quick before we hop off? If... Uh, there are actually uh, two movies I saw, one I rewatched and uh, one I just watched for the first time. Oh, sweet. Well, I was going to talk about one movie that we're anticipating, but, you know, we can talk about the other two movies, but let's get the fanatic final thoughts out of the way, uh, even though we were kind of doing that. Uh, yeah, this movie's bad. Oh, well, let me let me actually back up. Um, it's a riveting indie with genuine suspense. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. This movie's horrible. But it's hilarious, and I enjoy it. And if you want to just have a good time and just get drunk and laugh with your friends, watch this movie. I just, that's, that's all I'll say about it. Uh, Jacob, what, what are your final thoughts about this? Uh, this film is a master class in filmmaking. I'll say that again. Fred Durst did himself with this. John Travolta, this was his redemption. This is his best performance since Pulp Fiction. The direction, the editing, the storytelling, the characters, all in tip-top. It is perfection. But no, this movie's fucking abysmal. It is, <laughs> it is atrocious, but <coughs> I love every minute of this. It is hilarious. Oh, it's wonderful. It, it is. It is a delightful watch. But any of y'all, if you're in a bad mood, if you're depressed, just go watch Fanatic. You'll be. Che you'll. It'll cheer you up. But, uh, just trust me on that. Ah, man. Ugh. Gah. Ah. All right. What What movies have you seen recently, Jacob? <laughs> uh. I recently uh, rewatched Big Fish, uh, the Tim uh, Tim Burton film. I still and need to see that. Go watch it. It's my second favorite Tim Burton film. It's right behind uh, Edward Scissorhands. Oh like man, that's I'll, I'll take that. I fucking love Edward Scissorhands. And then oh. right, then right behind that is Batman '89. <laughs> but oh, yes. uh, I, I, Big Fish is one of those movies I haven't seen from uh, Tim Burton. I heard it's one of its uh, really good ones. One of his last like really really good ones. Oh, yeah. I love Big Fish. It is a <laughs> really beautiful tale about father and son, but it's done in a Tim Burton way that's magnificent. I strongly recommend it. It's on Netflix. Go check it out. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I love Tim Burton. Uh, or, well, I, I did. He's kind of been in a slump uh, for the last couple of years. But, um, yeah, some of his early films, Edward Scissorhands is probably one of my favorite fantasy films of all time. Also one of my favorite, De- probably my favorite Johnny Depp performance. I love him in, in that movie. And um, Big Fish has one of my other favorite actors, uh, Ewan McGregor's in it. I'm sure is great. Oh yeah, this is I say it's his best performance, Ewan McGregor. Oh man, like it, it's a wonder. Like it, it sounds like I I I love Tim Burton, and uh, now I want to watch now I want to watch Big Fish. Oh yeah, go watch it. I love that movie. Oh, like I said, my second favorite Burton film. Oh man. Of uh, yeah. I or or. I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I actually recently just finished up um, the new Ozark season, season four, part one came out. They're pulling a Breaking Bad on us and making us wait for two parts of the season. Um, and once again, excellent, excellent stuff. Like, if you love Breaking Bad like I do, and you want to scratch that itch, I mean, this is basically like Blackwood's Breaking Bad, except... Uh, Except there's no meth. It's about money laundering. And you think that would be really boring, but it's not. It's just pedal to the metal suspense all the way through. Like, my nerves are fucking shredded by the end of each season when I watch it. Like, it's ridiculous. Wow. I'm like, intrigued to go watch it. Yeah, like, go watch it. Like, it's about to end soon, so. I definitely plan on checking it out. I've heard about Ozark. Yes, I just haven't had a chance to get around to watching it. Oh, so you want to see uh, Jason Bateman just fucking, you know, show everyone he's not just that, you know, funny smartass from movies like Horrible Bosses and, you know, Arrested Development, even though that's a show. Uh, yeah, watch Ozark. Well, there's good comedic moments in the Ozark. Uh, what's the other movie you saw, Jacob? Uh, Paddington. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that I I know that probably that, I know that probably sounds like I'm I'm dismissing it. No no no. Uh, what were you gonna say, Jacob? Uh, Paddington. I actually I watched it. I loved this so much that I honestly feel felt kind of guilty of not seeing it in theaters. Like I found it to be such a joyous and charming film, full of heart. And uh, we all need a bit of we all all of us need a bit of Paddington in our lives. Yeah, I've I've heard Paddington and Paddington Two are are both incredible. I just haven't watched them because I don't know. I I, I don't know. I I like British things, but there are certain British things that I'm I'm kind of weird about. Like you know, uber polite. Oh, let's have a cup of tea. You know that kind of thing. Like Downton Abbey. Like I don't like that. Oh yeah. Or you know, or you know, uh, well, what's another one? Or you know those mysteries like Miss Marple. I don't really like that. Uh, oh, yeah. Paddington, I've heard, is, like, super wholesome and whatnot, and I don't mind s- super wholesome movies, like, that's fine. Uh, my aunt often makes fun of me for watching darker stuff, and I don't know, I, I guess I'm just a latent psychopath or something like that. I don't know, but, <laughs> I mean, I like watching positive things, but, you know, it's it, it's just really weird. I don't know, I, that's why I've been kind of hesitant to touch Paddington. Oh, I get it. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm open to anything. Uh, unless it's good. Like, I love me a good family film that's, like, well-made and has passion, <clears throat> that there's passion behind it. Paddington is a prime example, and after seeing this, I really want to see Paddington too. And it's not one of those uh, down Abbey things. It's not like that. <clears throat> it is so wholesome and so heartwarming that I want to watch it again. I mean, I mean, if we're talking about wholesome, I mean, I do like the Toy Story films. I don't know if you call oh, those yes. wholesome, but I, I, they are to me. Or Finding Nemo. That, I, I yes. think that's a wholesome movie. Oh, I, I, I would agree on that. Definitely. Uh, what, what's another film? Oh, It's a Wonderful Life. I love that film. The film brings oh, yes. me to tears. I'm such a sap. Uh, <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty wholesome film. Uh, so it's not like I'm allergic to uh, positive entertainment. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> um, I like Pixar films, so those are wholesome, right? Yeah, I would say them. Most of them. Unless if they're like the Cars movies. Oh, God. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> yeah, 
Oh, God, don't talk about cars. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Oh, we are. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, yeah, Paddington, uh, one of my one of the better family films I've seen. And I, I lo- as I said, I love a good family film. I love films that... Uh, I want a film that cheers me up and makes me feel happy. And Paddington is one of those films. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like I like good, wholesome entertainment, as long as it's not, like, contrived. Yeah. Or uh, pretentious, but this film is not. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll have to check out uh, Paddington at some point, but, yeah. I mean, I, I watch weird movies like The Fanatic, so that that let you know what <laughs> what type of movies I enjoy watching. <laughs> 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 don't worry, I, I have better taste than the fanatic. I can tell you that. that I don't like this movie. <laughs> Objectively, I think it's horrible. In terms of an objective like story level, I think it's horrendous. But it's a fun movie to watch. But yeah, Paddington, I might have to check it out at some point. You know, it's just recently added on Netflix, and I was like, I'll check it out. Like the first ten minutes, I was like, I love this movie. I might have to check it out then. I remember, I remember when I, I first saw Phantom Thread, and Jacob remembers this because I, because I, I texted him when I started watching it. I'm like, oh boy, Phantom Thread, new Paul yeah. Tom, recent Paul Thomas Anderson movie. I'm going to see how it is. I'm kind of nervous about this. Literally, first like couple of minutes, I was in. Like I'm like, oh, yes, give me this. It was fucking yes. great. <laughs> it's, I love it. <laughs> yeah, Phantom Thread. I love that movie. Oh, we gotta talk about it someday. We need to talk about Paul Thomas Anderson at some point. His newest movie came out. I didn't fucking see it like a dumbass. At least I not yet. To see it. I I didn't get to see it. I really wanted to, but then some shit got in the way. I got sick. This last week I got sick, and some other bull. Then I got hives on my body, and then after that I got sick, and now my ears fucking clogged so you know yeah I've, I've been having a bad go of it this January I'll, I'll link you to my Patreon you can send me petty money <laughs> but um but but yeah I, I haven't seen that many movies recently <laughs> I've been watching a lot of shows though uh, I've been I've, I rewatched Gravity Falls which is excellent oh yeah um oh, I freaking, I watched it again. I loved it even more than I did the last couple of times I saw it. Like, I'm not even kidding. Then I started The Owl House, which is made by the same same people who made Gravity Falls. Um, also incredible. Like, I, I wasn't expecting to get behind it. Oh my god, it's so good. I thought, ah, oh, it's gonna be like a ripoff of Over the Garden Wall. This, this can't be that good. And I saw it, I'm like, oh, I'm in. Yep. Let's do this. And literally, like, I, I couldn't, like, go away. Like, I, it was one of those shows I just had to see what happened next. That doesn't happen very often. Oh, wow. It's ridiculous. I gotcha. Get on Disney+. Plus. Ooh. I was also uh, considering watching The Book of Boba Fett, even though there's, like, people going like, Meh, it's bad, you know? I don't give a shit. I don't want to see it for myself. Plus, I'm like, ah, oh, Boba Fett, and he's being fucking cool, and he's basically like the godfather in Star Wars. Fuck yeah, I'm in. Like, I'm going to watch this. Well, yeah, after seeing him, uh, him appear in Mandalorian, I'm like, ah. Oh my god, he was awesome in The Mandalorian. Yeah, he was like, yes, this is <laughs> what I wanted. I'm like, see. yes. It's like Jon Favreau just read the collective fan base's mind and was like, oh, you want Boba Fett just fucking murdering everybody. Oh, I'll give you that. And it was just, that was my favorite episode of the whole season when he showed up and oh, just started goodness. wrecking Stormtroopers. Hands down. I love that. Oh my god. Best episode of the whole season. Oh yeah. Definitely. Can't wait for season three. Yeah. Wonder when season three's gonna come out. Oh, me too. I I hope it comes out. I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, But I mean, if they had ended it there, like that, that would've been fine. But I I was like, damn it, I wanna see what happens next, because Mandalorian, like... The Star Wars TV shows are underrated as fuck, man. Except for maybe the Mandalorian, because they have been keeping Star Wars in the public consciousness, while yes, the movies have just me. failed. 
Yeah, they made me a happy Star Wars fan again because after Rise of Skywalker, I sort of just gave up. But after seeing The Mandalorian Season 1 and 2, I was like, yes, finally, good Star Wars stuff coming out. Yeah, me too. I'm just It was like when I saw The Clone Wars for the first time, I was like, ah, oh, yes, good Star Wars. Thank you, George Lucas and, and whoever else made it. Dave Filoni, ah, oh, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, this, yeah, I I freaking loved. Uh, uh, I uh, yeah, Star Wars shows have been pretty damn cool. And we also had a great game, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Oh my god, yeah, that game was great. It's probably the best Star Wars game I've played since like ever, since like Kotor maybe. Well, Kotor is better in terms of like story, but this movie or this game is great. Or. Uh, Fallen Order was great, even though my cousin fucking beat it for me. Little bastard. <laughs> Sorry, Christian, if you ever see this. I still love you, buddy. I am a little salty, though, that you beat Fallen Order before I did, though. So, just just saying. I'm not jealous at all about that. Ah! Pop my fingers. Um, I, uh, in all honesty, I just haven't been able to make up my mind on what to watch recently. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> I have, like, a list, but I'm like, God, what am I going to see them? Like, I don't fucking know. Here are my two, uh, films I recommend. Big Fish. Mm -hmm. I know you love Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Paddington. Okay. I'll oh, also... I also did see another film, a new film that came out this year. What's that? Uh, the new Hotel Transylvania movie. Oh, God. I, oh. God. And oh. I, and all I, I'll just say, I'll, I'll just say this. They should have just ended it with three. Oh, God. Oh. I knew when Gindy wasn't, like, making it. Oh, I knew it was going to be bad. And you don't have Adam Sandler back? Oh, God. Boy, I will say... Never thought those words would come out of my mouth, but, hey, it's true. Yeah, it is true. It definitely is, and this film, and the fourth one proves it. But I will say, the actor who voiced uh, Dracula didn't do a bad job, but, you know, Adam Sandler, I mean, he, he, he did a great job as Dracula. But, you know, the fourth one... It didn't justify his existence. They just made a fourth one just to make a fourth one. That's it. Other than that, it sucks. My friend, uh, my friend uh, had Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon Video. He was like, we should watch this together. And I was like, why the hell not? I don't really want to see it, but do anything for you, buddy. And then I watched it, and I was just like, uh, this fucking sucks. I also finished uh, Euphoria Season 1. Which I got Carlton to watch, and as I expected, he loved it. Um, and incredible. Basically, what 13 Reasons Why wished it was. Fantastic oh, show. I forgot about that show. Ugh. Oh, man, that show's abysmal, but where 13 Reasons Why is a contrived piece of shit, Euphoria <laughs> is just like a platinum, medium-rare steak you're just gonna fucking dig your face into. Um, incredible just characterization and storytelling there are some things that make me question my suspension of disbelief at points but aside from that I still think the characters work in terms of like their you know psychology and all that yeah uh, yeah it's been on my watch list for a while but uh, uh, my sister she was just like it might be too, too much for you I was like, oh, in what, in, in what way? I was like, well, there's teenagers doing drugs and just a bunch of... <laughs> I was like, uh, I'll take my chances. <laughs> I'd just, like, just be like, dude, I'm 21. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, I've watched, uh, like, I've watched the worst things. I will, I, will, I will say there are a lot of, like, dicks in the show. Like, it's kind of, it's like, whoa. Like, but aside from that, it's like, yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. Oh, yeah, and also heard uh, about Zendaya's uh, performance, and I was like, I'm checking it out. Oh, Whatever she's incredible. In it. And the last thing I wanted to touch on, uh, the Batman running length time. I know we've talked about this movie to death, but I just wanted to share a funny story with everyone. 
Um, you know our boy Carlton, he was on a few weeks ago, uh, talked about Django Unchained. Uh, this man, let me tell you, here's a classic Carlton move. This man's just like, dude, guess what? And he seemed all dour. I'm like, what? And he's all like, dude, it's the Batman. I'm like, what? What is it? And he's like, dude, it's too... Uh, and, and my mind's fucking racing because I think like, ah, oh, shit, they fired Matt Reeves or some shit. And he's like, bro, it's two hours and 55 minutes. I'm like, oh, you bastard. <laughs> I, start, I was starting to think you were going to like... <laughs> you were sounding like it was bad news, you bastard. And he's like, ha, ah, yes, it's two hours and 55 minutes, boy. So go see it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, nearly uh, almost three hours long. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I was just kind of, I was kind of irritated. He pulled that. I'm like, dude, I thought you were gonna say like the movie got canceled or something. I'm like, oh my god, like, don't do that to me, man. Like, ugh. No, uh, I made a classic Carl. <laughs> no way home. He was like, dude, no way home. You're gonna cry when you after you see that movie. You're gonna go fucking fanboy out on me. I was like, oh god, fucking bastard! I thought it was something bad. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. It's just like, dude, don't do that. <laughs> Got me all worried there for a second. Jesus, man. Yeah, he had my heart racing. <laughs> yeah, I was just. I thought it's gonna be like. It's gonna be like the movie got canceled. I'm like, no. Like, it's like, dude. Ugh. <sighs> Oh my god, like, it's just... <laughs> nope, he's just like, nope, yeah, it's just 2 hours 55 minutes. You know what? I don't mind this. I like this. Me too. I'm All like, right. look, this yeah. movie looks great, and it's 2 hours and 55 minutes. Oh my god, I'm just... I'm just oh, oh, that's plenty of time for me. Like, I, I could take more. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm kidding. Should have made it 3 hours later, <laughs> and it says... <coughs> in credits. And I was like, holy shit! Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of longer movies... Uh, oh, yeah, Carlton's like, yeah, they should they should appreciate longer movies. I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, That reminds me, I probably have to finish the Snyder Cut soon. So, uh... Oh, you finish it. It'd be fun for me. <laughs> probably gonna call Jacob in the process. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. I'm usually not too fond of long movies on, as, uh, as long as they keep me engaged and invested. But... Yeah, the Batman being almost three hours long without end credits, I'm in. And it looks incredible. Like, I'm down to see it. Oh, I was I was down to see it from the first trailer. Like, you know, when Matt Reeves, I was like, okay, this could be a really good movie. Then I saw the trailer, I'm like, oh, man, I'm, f oh, yes. Give it now. Yes. Give it to me now. Give it to me now, Poppy. Yes. <laughs> but that reminds me, uh... Yeah, that reminds me. Uh, the fucking score. Oh my god, yeah, the, the score recently came out, too. And oh my god, it's incredible. Michael Giacchino, just mwah! Oh! I, I listen to that score, like, more, <laughs> than, more than a few times. I, Michael Giacchino, I think you outdid yourself with this score. Oh my gosh, I love the different tones of the theme, too. Like, it's not just, like, the, you know... You know, it's not just a big orchestral theme that's in the trailers. You know, it's it's like this, it's like this little, it's almost like a classical piece, and then it turns in like this epic thing, and you're like, yes, oh my yes. god, it's wonderful. I love it. I love it. This the score, it just gives me Arkham vibes, and I love it. Oh yeah, we also got a sneak peek at the scene in the movie. Oh my god. Uh. Wait, have you seen this, Jacob? Oh, yes, the funeral scene. Yeah, 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 have you seen it? I was in the shower the other day, and I was watching a video, and I just saw it, I'm like, oh, yes, I'm, I never sit for ads in, in, in YouTube, but I sat for that one, and it was, I'm like, oh, my God, stop, just stop, you're putting the, get, you're putting the pedal to the metal, like, oh, you're killing me with this. Like, can March come any closer? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like, we're only a few weeks away. Like, it's nuts. Like, ugh. Yeah, I'm excited, but also, like, terrified. Because I want this movie to be good. I hope and it's it good. looks good. And the marketing has been phenomenal. Yes, exactly. And that scene was also just fantastic. 
I mean, like, and I'm glad that they didn't just do like a spoiler scene. It's a scene we've seen in the trailer, and we also see Paul Dano as the Riddler, and they very cleverly don't show his face, which I I hope they keep up with that in the movie to make the reveal like all that you know. Yes, keep it a mystery until the movie is released. Reminds me very much of Seven because much like in this movie. In 7, we don't see Kevin Spacey's face. Well, actually, we do. Uh, there's a scene I never caught till like, years after I, like, saw it, which is where he takes the photo and he smashes, uh, where Brad Pitt smashes it. We do see Kevin Spacey right there, which, damn it, now that makes me want to talk about 7. But, um... Yeah. Which we might do someday. But, <laughs> which we'll definitely do. That is definitely on the list, because that's, like, one of my favorite crime movies ever. Oh, yeah. Like, you can ask, like, you can ask me, like, does Britain love Seven that much? I'm like, yeah, he fucking adores that movie. Oh, my God. I will, I will preach about that movie until the cows come. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I've annoyed all of my friends with how much I love this movie. Like, you, you can ask Jacob and, like, Carlton and just everybody I've talked to. It's like how, it's like how Ty loves Old Boy. Like, he'll harass anybody about that movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or or Whiplash to a la or uh, Whiplash. That's another movie. Like we both agree, we harass everybody to go see that. Oh yeah, or I'll, or how I'll harass everyone about Edge of Tomorrow. Like, yeah, no, so I need to, I need to see that actually. I have it right here on my on my desk. I I actually bought that film recently. I'm like, hey Jacob, guess what I got? You know, I, I think I narrated the story. He's like, yeah, boy. But uh, yeah, this uh, but yeah, the Batman looks great. Definitely, again, just they're leaning hard into the seven vibes with uh, not revealing the killer's face, which I, I think is a very good idea. It keeps the aura of mystery. Yes. Once again, keep it a mystery until the movie is released. I mean, yes. <laughs> and hell, I don't even know if that's like the actual full scene. It probably is. But, uh... <coughs> Um, we all, I also, there's also a nice little scene where, uh, Bruce saves a kid, I'm like, yep, that, that's Batman right there. Yep, that's Batman. You know, it's that, that, you know, he may be rough and tumble, but, you know, he still cares about innocent people. Mm-hmm. He, he's not gonna let innocent people die, you know, as long as he, as, as long as he has something to say about it. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, again, my most hyped film of this year. Like, it's just... Yeah, they're putting the pedal to the metal, and I'm just like, I can't wait to see this. Yeah, can March come any faster? Yeah, exactly. Like this, I'm like, Dad, we're seeing this damn movie when it comes out. Like that, and he's like, All right, <laughs> like, it'll be my birthday. It, it, that's like the only thing I'm asking for my birthday is like we go see this damn movie, and we go to the comedy club by my house. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, God, the Batman. Looks incredible. It better live up to the hype. You know what? You know what, Jacob? I'm going to try and swallow my doubt here. I think it might... It it, it, it really could. It, it certainly has a good chance. Because I heard recently that Matt Reeves was given 100%. Like, he said he wasn't going to do the movie unless he was given full control. And they were like, yeah, cool, do whatever you want. That gives me a little more. That gives me even more hope. I'm like, oh my god, yes. And I'm gonna. I'm. I'm trying not to overhype it, but I am very hyped for this movie, and I have a good feeling that they could. They could pull it off. Yeah, from what we're seeing, it could look like it could be the best Batman movie since The Dark Knight. Yes, exactly. And if this movie bangs as much as the if if this movie's as much of a banger as the trailer suggests it's gonna be. Oh, man, I can't wait for those two other movies, if they're gonna go ahead with them. Yes. <coughs> I am fucking there. <laughs> but for this movie, I'm fucking there. Like, I want to see it. Yeah, like, take my money. Like, again, please, give me, please, just give me a great Batman film. And we finally get to see Batman as the detective, as we've said over and over again, which excites me. Yes. This... Yeah, they're going for the noir detective type of film that I've wanted to see in a Batman film. 
And, I mean, I, I've wanted to do, like, a uh, talk about a Batman movie, bef at least one, before we see the Batman. Or talk about a movie that's like the Batman. But uh, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't made up my mind yet. Uh, of February, I, I had something I wanted to do. So I don't, I don't know if we're when we would get around to doing something like that. But, oh, well, we still got January to get through. Uh, let, me, let me actually see the calendar and see what the next uh, episode is on the 30th. So we still got time. All right. Cool, cool. Uh, but, um, I would like to do it near the basis, but, you know, Jacob gets to pick this, uh, next movie, but, um, but back to <coughs> the Batman looks fantastic. It does. I cannot wait for this film. I just, you know, uh, I just, it looks phenomenal and I can't wait to talk about it. Um, if we'll even get around to talk about it, because we're kind of burnt out still from, uh, Spider-Man, but, um, that's why I'm not, I don't want to do a thon like we did with, uh, Spider-Man, because, like, look, we already did that. Yeah, and there are a lot of Batman films. And, and look, they're, they're, like, you know, we sit around here and record these and whatnot, and, you know, we don't usually edit them, but it's like, you know, it, it does take some effort. Like, we have to think a lot when we make these. Yes. Which, you know, oh, poor you. Like, it's, it's just, like, just talk about the Batman movies, you pussy. But, hey. We already did a Spider-Man-a-thon, okay? We're taking a break from that. But I did want to talk about one Batman movie before this, this new one came out. I just don't know what yet. I'm leaning on Mask of the Phantasm, but I don't know. Or maybe we should talk about the Nolan trilogy, because I would love to talk about Dark Knight Rise and bring Carlton on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that's I'm ready to talk about the, the Nolan trilogy yet. That's a maybe. But also <laughs> like, Carlton, like, he's like, if you ever talk about Dark Knight Rises, please let me on that episode. Uh, which, yes, we definitely will do that when we get around to that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know yet. Uh, maybe Batman 89? I have no idea. But um, I would like to at least either A, talk about a movie that'll be similar to Batman, uh, the Batman, or we'll talk about a Batman movie. I, I would like to at least do one. I, again, I don't want to do another marathon because I'm, I'm kind of burnt out from that. Yeah. Yeah, burnt out. we were burnt out on the Spider-Man-a-thon we did, so... No, uh, don't we get me wrong. Those were fun to make. <laughs> oh, sorry. Really? Oh, what were you saying? Hopefully. Yeah, if we we already did the Spider Man a thon, we're burned out. We're still burned down on that. If we talked about all the Batman films, which there's more of those than any Spider Man film, yeah. Oh God, we would die. <laughs> <laughs> we just be like, okay. Let's just talk about other movies. <laughs> but like, what I might talk about at least one, maybe two, maybe uh, at least one. I would like to talk about at least one, but uh, you know, we'll see. I'm still figuring it out. But yeah, that approaches the end of our uh, our episode. Um, we haven't picked, though, yet. Uh, Jacob, have, have you thought about a movie we could talk about uh, this yes, upcoming I, week? Yes, I've actually made my decision on what uh, which film I would love to discuss on here. Uh, it's a Spielberg film. And in my, <laughs> in my opinion, his most underrated film, and I am talking about Minority Report. Ooh, Minority Report. Ah, oh, I was not expecting that out of all the movies we could have chosen to talk about. Yes, I, I would. That actually sounds like fun. I, I've been meaning to talk about uh, a sci-fi movie on here. I, I just didn't know which one yet. Uh, I, I just felt like uh, the fanatics didn't have any other ideas. I'll have to, I'll have, I'll, we'll have to like fish through our movies to see which ones we've both seen. And they'll have like ideas. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but Minority Report. All right, I'm down for that. I I quite enjoyed that movie. I love that movie. Personally. Uh, I I mean I I I do agree. It is an underrated film from Spielberg. Despite my issues I may have with him, I do think he is a a good film maker. He's good at his job. Indeed. 
Like, he is good for a reason. There's some people who are like, oh, he, he just makes movies with those John Williams scores. I'm like, bro. Bro. Indiana Jones wouldn't exist without this man. Like, you know, Jaws wouldn't exist without this man. Duel, which is another underrated film from him, wouldn't exist. You know, like, come on. Don't be like that. Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Anyway. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Minority Report, I think, is a very, very good movie. Uh, with Tom Cruise, uh, uh, you know, he's, he, I guess he really likes sci-fi movies. He likes doing those. <coughs> anyway. But, yeah, I guess we're doing Minority Report. I'm fine with that. <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear we're doing that. And then uh, I was hoping, if Jacob wouldn't mind here, I had an idea of a thing we could do for February. Uh, we would do something for uh, Black History Month. Because uh, that, that's yeah. that's coming up. I, I thought it would be fun to talk about some uh, African-American-centric movies. Um, there are good ones out there, and I, I, I kind of want to talk about them for February. I'm down. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Then in March, we can do whatever then. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sure my parents will make fun of me for doing a Black History Month section, but you know what? I don't fucking care. This, there are good black-centric movies. Yes, there are. But, uh, yeah, Minority Report. Sounds good to me. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, the Fanatic. That was our review of The Fanatic, as well as us talking about other films and shows we've been watching. I've been Britain. I've been Jacob. And we do it for the love of the movies. At least most of the time. Yes, we do. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>